Hello, middle school parents. Welcome to curriculum night. Um, this is done a little bit differently, and I miss you all being in my classroom and seeing all your faces. Um, but I'm glad we can have this experience virtually and do this in a new way. So welcome. I hope you're enjoying being on your couch, maybe in your pajamas, relaxing at home watching this. Um, but if you have any questions after this presentation, feel free to email me and let me know and I will help you find an answer. So um, if you don't know me or I haven't met you, my name is Ms. Beckermeyer and I am your child's math teacher. I'm super excited to be teaching our middle schoolers again this year. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into the PowerPoint presentation. Um, I will have an attachment of this PowerPoint, especially if it's a little bit hard to see with the lighting. So feel free to look at the attachment to the email for this PowerPoint presentation. Um, so a few things, please refer to a handout that I'm going to, I would give you in class, but it will also be attached to the email. That's going to have a ton of information about the specific curriculum um, and topics of math your child will be learning this year. So feel free to take a look at those packets and then let me know again if you have any questions after you watch this video. So a little bit about myself. Um, like I said, my name is Ms. Beckermeyer. Um, I, when I was in college, completed clinicals in a kindergarten classroom, and then I student taught in seventh grade math. So I knew I always wanted to go to the upper grades. Um, I taught fifth grade here at Trinity for two years. I loved fifth grade. It was such a great time. My eighth graders now were actually my second fifth grade class here. Um, but then I felt the Lord calling me to middle school math. So I bumped up when the position opened and um, this will be my fifth year at Trinity and my third year teaching middle school math, which is very exciting. Time really flies. Um, I graduated from University of Illinois and received my degree in elementary education with a middle school endorsement. And then I also received endorsements in math, language arts, um, social studies, science, and dance. Um, my concentration is also in math. Um, I am currently, this is something new, I'm currently working on getting my master's degree from Olivet Nazarene University. Um, I'm getting a degree in curriculum and instruction and then also an endorsement in teacher leadership. So I'm super excited about that. I um, have been doing that now for 16 weeks. So I just completed my second course and will be moving on to my third. Um, I come from, I grew up with two siblings, I come from a family of six now. I have an older brother, he's been married for a few years to my sister-in-law, Hannah. And my sister, she's three years younger than me, she just got married to her high school sweetheart. Um, she just got married about two weeks ago, so that was super exciting for our family. And then my mom actually works here, she's the director of Devel development here at Trinity, and my dad as well. And I am an aunt, which I love being an aunt, to my sweet niece named Emery. She's about a year and a half. And then I will be a, um, an aunt of two nieces in December. My sister-in-law is pregnant, so I'm super excited to meet my second niece in December. Um, you guys know that I'm a school teacher here, and I'm also a dance teacher. I teach at a studio called Southwest Synergy in Tinley Park once a week. Um, in the evening, so I've done that. This is my fifth year there as well. Um, at Trinity, I coach cheer here. I teach ribbon dance, I lead student council, and choreograph the school musical, the middle school musical. So I love being involved at Trinity. I love seeing what your students are passionate about and attending things that they love to do. I love to see them in their element outside of the classroom. This is a picture of my family from my sister's wedding. So we have everyone there, my new brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my brother and sister, and my parents, and then my sweet niece. And these are three pictures of my niece, Emery. Um, here we're at a lake. This is Easter. And then this is her with holding the ultrasound, which is super sweet. Um, some things about my teaching philosophy. Um, I'm extremely passionate about teaching and watching my students grow academically, socially, and spiritually. 
Um, it is important to engage my students in their learning and teach specifically to their needs. And because of that, we do um, pacing classes here um, in our math department. And so I'll explain that a little more later when we talk about curriculum. I desire to use assessments to see where my students are at um, and see if we need to go back and teach in a new way. I strive for my students to master content while having fun with learning. Um, one goal I have is to help them grow and develop in their character. Another goal is to encourage them to see Christ in all they do and to be who he's called them to be. And then I believe reflection is important for students and teachers to see how things can be done differently next time. I believe it's super important to reflect on what we've done and see how things can be changed or things that went well um, and different ideas like that. I'm gonna skip, this is eighth grade Bible. You'll see that in a different video. Eighth grade information. So I'm gonna jump to curriculum at the end for specific grade levels. So if you are a parent of siblings, you can kind of fast forward this to the end. The end will have different information in it based on their grade level. But homework, tests, and quizzes, my policies run the same throughout middle school. Um, so for homework, students will have homework almost every night except for Fridays. I believe that this is necessary for math as it's important for them to practice. Math is a lot of repetition of steps and so they need that practice. I don't love to overload them, especially because I know a ton of students have their extracurricular activities, but I do think it's important to practice. A lot of them are able to get a majority done in study hall, which is a great option for them. Um, math tests come at the end of every chapter, and then I do quizzes or quick quizzes, usually every Friday or every other Friday to kind of test where they're at. Um, homework and quiz corrections. They may correct any homework assignment, any quiz assignment. Homework assignments are a lot of times graded for completion because I believe that the homework is where you practice, um, where you find your mistakes, and then you're able to perfect it for the quiz or the test. Um, so that's for homework. They can correct homework though, if it's graded for an actual grade, they can correct that homework for half credit. Same thing with a quiz, they can correct for half credit and needs to be completed on a separate sheet of paper for those corrections. Quizzes are always open note as well, so they are able to use their notes on that. Test corrections, students may only correct a test if it's a 75% or below. So they need to be ready and prepared to take that test, and that's why I have that policy in there. So, um, but if they have a 75% or below, they'd probably meet with me, we'd look at the test, see what they're not understanding, and then have them um, correct that test. Late work needs to be turned in the day of or the day after an unprepared is given. So if they receive an unprepared for not having their homework, they need to have that late work in the next day. Um, points may be deducted if it's not. All graded work is handed back every Tuesday. So especially for my sixth grade parents, this is new. You're probably used to your Friday homework folders or Friday graded work folders in fifth grade. Um, and in middle school, you don't always see those papers come home. So please note, I hand back graded work every Tuesday. So if you would like to see your students' graded work, um, check their binder, ask them to show it to you. But if something's graded, test, quiz, homework from the week before, they will receive that on Tuesdays. Um, all corrections are due that following Friday. So if graded work is given back on Tuesdays, then the papers I gave back, if the students want to correct any of those papers, they're due back to me on that Friday. And then materials, make sure to be prepared for class. Um, grading scale for math class, this is kind of how it's weighted in here. Homework and classwork is 30%. Quizzes are 30%, tests are 35%, and then big 25s or big 20s, which are kind of just an assessment or practice of everything they've learned. And um, those are 5%, I'll get back to those in a second. And you can check out Trinity's grading scale as well. In math, I believe so much of math is confidence. 
So I'm always encouraging your kids to have a positive mindset. Math is a challenge, and it's a challenge for a lot of us. So please also encourage them at home to keep trying, keep practicing, um, and put forth their best effort. If students need extra help, I am available to help them. I, it's a little crazy around here sometimes depending on the season, but I want to be available to help them. So in the beginning of the year while I'm not coaching, I'm available Mondays and Monday, Wednesdays from 7.45 till 8.15 in the morning and then after school from 3.30 until 4 p.m. Um, if they need additional tutoring, we could talk about that. But those are kind of my office hours. Um, I just ask that you send an email to me and let me know your child is coming to work with me so I'm ready and prepared for them. Um, another great resource to practice would be using Khan Academy. I use Class Dojo for um, pictures and to post announcements, so I will get you all those codes if you want to be updated on what's going on in the classroom through that. Um, my contact information, you'll have it in your package, you'll have it on this PowerPoint. Email is the best way to reach me. Um, that is fine, my work phone is fine, um, but please don't use my personal cell phone. Um, just stick to work phone and email if possible. And I will do my best to respond to you in 24 hours, but if for some reason I don't, feel free to send me a reminder email or like, hey, did you get this? Um, I'm totally okay with that. Sometimes I may miss something. I always have an open door policy, so if you need anything, please feel free to come on in and ask me. I would love to help you out. If you need a conference um, with me in the beginning of the year, also please let me know. I'd be happy to chat with you. Um, handouts to make sure that you look through those paperwork. That's going to help you um, learn and go through everything that I talked about in this presentation plus more. So check those out. All right, a little bit about the eighth grade curriculum. So in eighth grade, we teach Algebra One. Algebra One is a freshman level course um, that students will be taking here at Trinity eighth grade year. Um, please note this is a challenging course. Um, I tell the students every day is um, math have may maybe have come easy to them in the past years and now it can get challenging for students. So perseverance is a huge thing, especially in Algebra 1. Um, for the 8A students, um, they're kind of at a faster pace. Um, 8A for math, not for homeroom. But they're at a faster pace and we'll be working through the Algebra 1 curriculum. For my 8B students who are at a slower pace, we'll be doing a combination of pre-algebra and algebra. Um, if your child's in our 8A class, they, the hopes for them in high school is to go into either regular geometry or honors geometry. Um, but I have had a student or two from the 8A class um, either do advanced algebra or honors algebra at a high school level. And then a lot of my 8B students here will do um, another year of Algebra 1 as it is that freshman level course. So their 8th grade year will give them a really strong foundation um, before they go to high school. So if you look at the packet um, that is in the email, it's on an attachment, you'll see all the different things we go through meeting the state standards this year. So um, foundations for algebra, which focuses on expressions and square roots and real numbers and variables, um, equations, tons of equations, two-step equations, multi-step equations, um, um, solving problems with variables on both sides, we have lots of inequalities and in graphing them, functions, linear functions, systems of equations and inequalities, which I love, the kids don't always love, but I love it. Um, exponents and polynomials, quadratic functions, exponential functions, radical functions, things like that. So again, um, lots of challenging topics, but topics that we will work through that I will be here to help them through um, and that I'm excited to walk with them. Um, throughout this. Um, for their calculator, most of them have it now that TI-84. Um, I know it's super expensive and I'm super sorry about that, but um, just to encourage you, hopefully it's an investment because I still have my calculator from years and years ago when I took Algebra 1. So 
I have told your students over and over and over, this is not something you are going to lose. They will need it in high school for Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, Calculus, those types of math classes. They will use this calculator throughout high school. So try and think of it like not spending $100 for the year, but for the next five years. Um, so encourage them not to lose it, and I will do the same. I've told them to write Sharpie marker on not only the calculator, but the case as well. So, or vice versa, not just the case, but the calculator as well. So if you have any questions on the curriculum, um, please let me know. I am here to help. Um, I'm so looking forward to teaching your students for one final year. It's been a blessing the past three years. Um, and I appreciate you guys listening to this video. You've sat through my presentations and now this is probably your fourth one. Um, so thank you for watching this video and have an awesome night.